Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the first Saturday PDX program series. So glad to have you here. We just opened the door to today's webinar. We'll give it about a minute for everybody to come on in um, and then we'll get started. Um, today's topic is Tea and Wine, a new look at the Song Dynasty poetry of Li Qing Zhao. And our speaker today is Melody Run. I would like to now introduce our guest speaker, uh, Melody Run. Again, today's talk is Tea and Wine, a new look at the poetry of Li Qing Zhao. Before coming to the United States in 2019, Melody Run was a senior wine educator and consultant in Shanghai, China. She has a WSET diploma from the UK, an MBA from France, and recently um, acquired a master's in applied linguistics at Portland State University. She's also currently collaborating on a project to combine wine education with language learning and socialization. Melody's passion for tea extends beyond her professional expertise. She is a tea practitioner who believes that tea and wine share many similarities. She has a deep passion for promoting and sharing Chinese culture with the world and is a, has a belief in bridging the cultural gap and fostering greater understanding through education and appreciation. So please join me in a warm welcome to Melody Ren. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Melody Ren. Uh, thank you for uh, first the Saturday PDX inviting me as a guest to speak today. Um, my topic today is tea and wine, a new look at the Song Dynasty poetry of Li Qingzhao. I would like to take you to a short journey of the poetry from Li Qingzhao uh, through the lens of tea and wine. Let's start with a brief summary of Li Qingzhao. Uh, living in the Song Dynasty, Li Qingzhao is universally considered as China's greatest woman poet. Her name Qingzhao means limpid light, as translated by American scholar Florence Ascroft in the 1930s. Li Qingzhao is also known for uh, as Yi uh, An Ju Shi. Ju Shi, which means the Lady Buddhist, is a general term for someone who practices Buddhism or Taoism at home. But in the Tang and the Song dynasty, a lot of scholars liked to use this word to refer to themselves. Yi An is from another poet, Tao Yuan means poetry. In which one line says, Shen Rong Xi Zhi Yi An, means be content with the little space. Yi An literally means easy and peace. Li Qingzhao is known for her Ci poem, a form of lyric verse written for musical accompaniment, consisting of lines in different lengths. Each type of Ci poem has a fixed number of words conforming to a strict rhyme scheme with more than 1,000 types more now extant. Li Qingzhao is famous for her, her Ci poem of an elegant and restrained style called Wan Yue Ci in Chinese. And she brought Wan Yue Ci to its highest perfection and formed her own style, Yi An Ci. Yi An Ci became a style of Chinese classical poetry that features skillful use of reputation and imagery. Her contribution to Chinese poetry is not only as a female poet, but to enrich the Chinese poetry language in general and had a big influence on many later male poets. Even Xin Qiji, 
who is a poet known for his unstrained style, is believed to have got have got a lot of influence from Yi Anzi in some of his restrained style poetry. 众里寻他千百度，蓦然回首。那人却在灯火阑珊处。In the crowd, once and again, I look for her in vain. When all at once I turned my head, I found her there, where lantern light is dimly shed. 李清照 was born in 1084 in a wealthy family of scholar officials, which provided her with sufficient education in literature and poetry. Her father was a student of Su Shi, another famous poet in Song Dynasty, and his father was a scholar official in the Imperial Academy. He has a rich collection of books and wrote the book The History of Song. Qing Zhao's mother was a granddaughter of a Zhuang Yuan, the number one scholar. Which is a title conferred on someone who came first in the highest imperial examination, and she also had a great literary cultivation and was a poet too. Li Qingzhao learned music from young age, which contributed to her great great ability of mastering musicality in her Si Poem. Here is one of the most famous Si poems written in her young age. I will read the Chinese version and the translated English version as well. Ru Meng Ling, Chang Ji Xi Ting Ri Mu, Chen Zui Bu Zhi Gui Lu, Jing Xin Wan Hui Zhou, Wu Ru Ou Hua Shen Chu, Zhen Du Zhen Du. To the tomb, as if in a dream. I often recall when sunset in a riverside pavilion. Having drunk too much, I forgot the way home. Knowing it was late, I started back in my boat at dusk. But paddled by mistake into a thick patch of lotus. Struggling to get out, struggling to get out, I startled a whole sandbar of egrets into flight. The second phase is Li Qingzhao's marriage life. She married when she was eighteen years old to a student in the Imperial Academy called Zhao Mingchen. Zhao became a scholar official too. And later, a famous epigraphist who specialized in deciphering old inscriptions on stone and bronze. Li Qingzhao and her husband shared the same passion for poetry, painting, calligraphy, precious jade, and all kinds of antiques. They collected ancient bronze and stone inscription together. She assisted Zhao in, in writing the book Jing Shi Lu, which is a catalog of their collected bronze and stone inscriptions. In terms of its in-depth and extensive research, Jing Shi Lu was a highly regarded、uh, philology work of Song Dynasty. During this period. Li Qingzhao wrote beautiful Si poems to express her love for her husband and her loneliness when he was away. One of the most well-known ones is this: "To the same tune of 
as if in a dream. 如梦令，昨夜雨疏风骤，浓睡不消残酒。试问卷帘人，却道海棠依旧。知否？知否？应是绿肥红瘦。Last night the rain was intermittent, the wind blustery. Deep sleep. Did not dispel the lingering wine. I tried to ask the maid raising the blinds, who said the crab apple blossoms were as before. Don't you know? Don't you know? The greens must be plump and the reds spindly. The third phase is Li Qingzhao's later life in exile. During the wars between Jin and Song, the Northern Song regime fell. Li Qingzhao and her family were forced to flee from their home in Kaifeng, the capital of Northern Song Dynasty. During the trip, they lost a lot of their collections. In 1129. Zhao Mingchen died of typhoid. After that, more collections were lost on the way when Li Qingzhao moved constantly, trying to find a helper in life. Three years after her husband's death, Li Qingzhao remarried to a man, but this man just coveted her collections and mistreated her after the marriage. She divorced him after three months. Li Qingzhao died in her seventies in poverty and loneliness. With the loss of homeland, her husband, and the collections that were full of their memories, in her late age, Li Qingzhao wrote this poem, a long, melancholy tune. 声声慢，寻寻觅觅，冷冷清清，凄凄惨惨，凄凄。乍暖还寒时候，最难将息。三杯两盏淡酒，怎敌他晚来风急？雁过也，正伤心，却是旧时相识。满地黄花堆积，憔悴损。如今有谁堪摘？守着窗儿，独自怎生的黑？梧桐更兼细雨，到黄昏，点点滴滴。这次第，怎一个愁字了得？ Searching, seeking, feeling cold and lonely, painful, sorrowful, and bleak, as the weather shifts from warm to chilly, it's hard to calm the heart down. Three cups of light wine and two small glasses can't stand up to the swift night wind. Geese fly past. Stirring up sadness, and I am reminded of old friends. The ground is piled high with yellow flowers, thin and haggard. Who can pick them now? Sitting alone by the window, how can I bear the darkness? Parasol trees and the drizzling rain, drip by drip, until dusk falls. How can I express this boundless sorrow in this endless cycle? How can one word capture it all?
In the next part, I will introduce some points mentioning tea and wine. For this part, I will only read several lines instead of the whole poem. First, tea. Some of these poems have wine described as well. This one, the partridge sky. 酒兰更喜团茶苦,梦断以偏移瑞脑香. One sudden, I prefer the bitterness of tea, my dreams interrupted by the scent of aloe's word. Here, the translation didn't mention the shape of the tea. Actually, in Chinese, it says, Tuan Cha which is a kind of tea in round cake shape, as known in the picture on the right corner. For this, I have to mention the Chinese tea evolution in different times. As you might have known, tea originated from China dated back to 5,000 years ago. In the Tang Dynasty, the tea culture developed and flourished. But during the Song Dynasty, Chinese tea culture reached its heyday. At that time, tea became the favorite drink of emperors and a medium for artists. The form of tea during that time was steamed green tea. After the tea leaves were steamed, crushed, pressed, and dried, they formed into round or square cake shapes. Some types of tea cakes were special made for offering to the royal family. During the Song Dynasty, the imperial court often awarded tea cakes to the ministers as a reward. However, during the Ming Dynasty, Emperor Zhu Yuanzhang made an order to stop producing long tuan tea, which is compressed tea cakes with a dragon pattern on it. The emperor's order informed the tea farmers to pay tribute with loose tea in, instead of the pressed tea. This elevated the economic value of the loose tea in the market. So finally, loose tea replaced the, the pressed tea and became the main trend of Chinese tea. Until the Qing Dynasty, the, not until the Qing Dynasty, um, the tea making method evolved to more varieties with different fermentation levels, which formed the six types of tea in China. Until modern days, more processed tea, such as flower tea, had been invented. This picture on the um, bottom left shows a person cooking tea instead of tea brewing method nowadays. And the picture on the top right of this slide shows a stone grinder grinding tea into powder. When being served, the tea cake will be crushed and grinded into powders then mixed with boiled water. At the lower left are illustrations of two different kinds of grinders recorded in an ancient book. In this poem, Li Qingzhao wrote, Li Yun Long Nian Yu Chen Chen. I grind tea bricks into fine jade powders in a pot carved with azure clouds. Uh, it is generally believed that Bi Yun, the Asia clouds, refer to tea cake, not the pot. Nian Yu Chen Chen, green the tea bricks into fine jade powder. Because it's seasonal, it's a seasonal green tea, the poet used jade to describe the color and the precious value of the tea. Liu Xiaomeng. Still under the spell of the morning dream, till all of a sudden I am woken 
by a jack of spring. A jack of spring also refers to a cup of green tea in the early spring. Uh, on the left corner in this picture from the Song Dynasty, it shows a grinder as well. And the picture on the right shows the tea brewing procedure in the Song Dynasty. Breaking tea cakes, grinding with two different grinders, same as in the ancient book, sieves, and a holder on the plate for the tea powder. Then, tea powder being added into a bowl, a bowl and adding boiling water, whisking, and serving the tea in a cup with a saucer. This way of whisking tea powder in water is preserved by Japanese tea culture since tea was spread into Japan during the Song and the Tang Dynasty. However, due to the replacement of tea cake by loose tea, this tea brewing method became extinct in China. In the following poem, The Morning Dream illustrates a tea party. With the guest, the host serves the tea. Pian pian zuo shang ke, yi miao yu yi jia, chao ci dou gui bian, wo huo fen xing cha. Gracefully sitting with the guests, her charming words are delightful. Taunting with sharp words and debating with witty arguments, the fresh tea is divided on the lively fire. This painting, Wen Hui Tu, Assembly of Literary, by Song Hui Zong, who was an emperor in the northern Song Dynasty. We can see the lively fire and a servant dividing and serving tea into several cups of several cups and with saucers. In another poem, uh, courtyard full of fragrance, the poet illustrates another tea party in her memory of happy days in the past. There is a famous verse, Shen Xiang Xun Xiu, Huo Huo Fen Cha. Our sleeves perfumed with incense. Before the lively flame, we shared the tea. There is another version of translation that says, guests in perfumed robes, sipping tea brewed over a living fire. That translation didn't translate the verb fen, which means share and divide. In the postscript of Jing Shi Lu, written by Li Qingzhao, a book to continue her husband's work, Jing Shi Lu. She wrote down a happy memory about the tea game she played with her husband. Li Qingzhao invented a game to make a bet on tea. Who can correctly memorize a certain mat in the book and be able to find the right place where it is located and drink the prepared tea first. So she wrote, once I won, I raised my teacup and laughed, but spilled the tea in my arms. So I had to stand up without drinking. This story was used as an allusion later by another point, Na Ran Rong Luo in the Qing Dynasty. He wrote, Du Shu Xiao De Po Cha Xiang. Much fun we had with tea games bets on poems while we spilled the tea to memorize his own passed away wife. 
Then comes the part of why. In the Song Dynasty, banquet with wine was also very popular. Many paintings from the Song Dynasty depict scenes of nobles, scholars, officials, and uh, literary feasting and drinking. Wine is also enjoyed at home. In this poem, a line says, Gong Shang Jing Zun Chen Lu Yi, Mo Zi Zui, Zi Hua Bu Yu Chun Hua Bi. Come drain these golden cups of emerald till we are drunk. All of flower, this is one beyond compare. Note that they use the golden cups. This was a ballad pop for the couple. Just got married, enjoyed a wealthy and a leisure life. The green ants, translated as emerald here, actually illustrate the fresh bubbly foam floating on the top of the newly fermented rice wine, giving a slightly greenish color. Ants refers to the foam on the rice wine that was not filtered. In some poems by other Chinese poets, green ants or green wine were mentioned frequently. Coincidentally, in Portugal, there is also a kind of wine called green wine, which is Winkle Vector. Uh, the green wine is not really green, but rather refers to a young white wine. The reason why it is called green wine is because it often has a slightly greenish reflection when the wine is young and with high acidity and often slightly sparkling. While the wine in the West Country is made from grapes, the traditional Chinese jiu in Song Dynasty is made from fermented steamed rice. Jiu is a general word in China for all the drinks containing alcohol, no matter fermented or distilled. You might have heard of bai jiu, a transparent white spirit, which is a distilled one that emerged when the Mongolia army brought the distillation techniques from the Arab countries. The Mongolian built the Yuan dynasty after the Song, but not before the Qing dynasty did the, the distilled alcohol drinks become popular. For the Han ethnic group, especially from South China, the traditional jiu is rice wine. Because it is fermented, it is closer to the grape wine, which is also fermented. So it makes sense to translate this kind of jiu as wine. In Japan, their rice wine is called qingshu or sake, using similar production procedures, but different species of rice. In this poem, the word to represent wine changed to wu bo, amber. Mo xu bei sheng wu bo nong, wei cheng chen zui yi xian rong. Don't fill my cup with amber wine up to the brain. Before I'm drunk, my heart melts with yearning for him. The amber color represents aged wine that is oxidized. So the color became darker. Usually only good wine can be aged. Here, good incense like Rui Nao Xiang and the golden hairpin are mentioned. Their life was still wealthy then. The following poem, 
was also written in her young age, soon after the marriage. Zhao Mingchen had to leave for a far, far away journey, leaving Li Qingzhao lonely and yearning for him. At the Chongyang Festival, Li wrote this poem to Zhao. The poem expressed Li Qingzhao's sadness and longing and her desire to be with her husband on this festival occasion. Dong Li Ba Jiu Huang Hun Hou, Yu An Xiang Ying Xiu. After drinking wine at twilight and the chrysanthemum hedge, my sleeves are perfumed by the fragrance of the plants. Here, the golden censer, the jade pillow, still shows her luxury lifestyle. However, her life changed with the fall down of the northern Song region. In 1129, when she wrote this poem, the poet experienced the collapse of the country, the loss of her husband, and the dispersal of their collections. There's deep sadness and loneliness between lines. Fading incense, remnants of wine, a heart full of remorse. Let's come back to this a long melancholy tune again. Three cups of light wine and two small glasses can't stand up to the swift night wind. Here, the wind become light. The wine became light if we compare to the one in her best time. When the cup was big and the wine was amber and deep. Life changed and the wine changed too. Only the yellow flowers piled up on the ground and are mentioned. Parasol trees and a dazzling rain, darkness, boundless sorrow, what are miserable moments. After reading these poems, we can see Qing Chao's life was marked by great contrasts. In her poetries, we can see her boundless and coyness as a young girl, her lingering lovesickness to her husband when married, and her deep sadness and solitude accompanied with memories of her decreased, deceased husband and her beloved northern homeland in her late age. Tea and wine are intertwined in her life and accompany her throughout the joyful young age and sorrowful late age. They were seasoning in the affluent life and become bitter memories and the psychological sustenance in a miserable time. Thank you for being with me during the lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are interested in talking about tea or wine, you are welcome to drop me some lines to my email. Thank you. I stop share here. Thank you so much, Melody. That was so informative and so interesting to see all the comparisons of the poetry throughout her life. We are going to start our question and excuse me, question and answer session now. Um, so really quick as a reminder um, of, to the audience, there is a menu bar for Zoom and there's a little icon for Q&A. If you have a question, feel free to click on that and that will give you the option, the opportunity to type in your question. 
um, if for some reason you can't find that little Q&A icon in the box, um, if you're on the phone or something, you can also type it into the chat and we will try to make sure to pay attention to that. Um, and if all else fails, feel free to um, you know, respond to your confirmation, your right, reminder emails, <clears throat> excuse me, and that will also show up for us. We'll do our best to capture all of them. Um, yeah, we're gonna start off with, let's see. Okay, our first question is, can you talk about how the poet's work has been received both during her time as well as kind of through the years to the present time. So uh, what was, can you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, it's, can you talk about how the poet's work has been received um, both during her time and then through the years to the present? So oh, yeah. mm -hmm. like popularity, cr the criticisms, did they kind of shift through time? Something like that. Yeah, so, um, Li Qingzhuang already become kind of famous in her young age because she uh, used to criticize uh, work uh, by his her father's friends uh, at very young age. So um, criticized that he didn't uh, notice the like historical background of that uh, poem and uh, so like super uh, criticism on. Her, his so so uh, superficial about that that history, um, and she wrote those uh, like the uh, the Lu Meng Ling. Uh, um, so the, I mentioned the, uh, at first. Uh, so people already know she was so talented because and uh, because of she is a um, from a wealthy family, and her her father is. Uh, at higher um uh, uh higher, higher level of in the court so uh, in her court so she is um like she's her her point can uh, spread to a lot of person that they 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 will uh, see her work so um and because of his talent he um her master of those um poetry so they think uh, they, they, she is uh, highly recognized already, um, and uh, and also in her marriage, um, because she can she, her talent of in in poem uh, defeat her husband even. So uh, there was once uh, she wrote a poem, and uh, her husband thought um, felt ashamed that. that uh, she, her his own talent is not cannot compete her talent. So she also wrote the same to the same tune. Uh, I remember maybe she wrote eleven or more um, in several days. Um, then she mixed her, his work with her work and represents to some friends. But her, uh, his friends uh, just picked the one that Li Qingzhao wrote and says. Um, this is the only one that um, is uh, very good, but uh, no, um, the other ones are garbage. <laughs> so he, her husband, become even shamed. Uh, so, but also she, uh, he wrote uh, articles to praise her talent, and um, um, so a lot of male poet, male scholars, uh, very admire her, uh, admired her for appreciate her talent. Um, then, um, if you remember, I mentioned uh, um, uh, her. Um, life uh, when after her husband died, uh, she married to um, she remarried, um, and uh, she divorced uh, after the marriage. Um, and uh, the divorce was she actually sued the husband uh, to be divorced because at that time the law doesn't allow a woman to divorce a. a her husband without agreement from the husband, so um, she has to 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 sue him. Him, but it was not considered as like very moral for women to sue her husband. So after that, um, a lot of scholar blamed him 
about this, and they think she um she she is not like as considered as the moral female in that age. So people began to against her. Um, but the, the, the he, her poem still um still you, you know um admired by a lot of people. Also, there's the dispute about this. Um, her life in the in the late time, um, and then um, it was admired by a lot of scholars. After I mentioned, like Xin Qi uh, in the same time um, used her style to write poem, and uh, after like Qing Dynasty, there's as a poets uh, write uh, write poem according to her style or use the sentence she uh, she wrote and uh, it sh her work also uh, maybe the most translated uh, one to the world um so it's even start early in 1930s uh, people began to translate her work uh, and uh, uh, first was those english scholars uh, translators and then uh, maybe in 1960s, 50s, 30s, uh, 60s, um, American scholar began to uh, has a lot of translation uh, of her work. So it spread to the world um, and a lot of study on her work. Also, you, you can find a lot of um, uh, works, um, literature about her, about the poetry, about her life or some endless on uh, her works. So I hope uh, I answered your question. Yes, that was perfect. Thank you so much for um, sharing that, um, all those details um, about her life. We've got some more questions, which are great. Um, also a little bit about her life and how it influences her art. Uh, one question is, since she was so elite at the time of her first marriage, how did the fall of the Northern Song lead to her being in poverty? Oh, uh, you mean why she, she became poor uh, after after the, the fall of the Song, Northern Song Dynasty? Yeah, so I mean, just if you can talk about how, how dramatically her situation changed. Yeah. So, um, so you know, um, Song Dynasty has uh, two parts: uh, Northern Song and the Southern Song. Because um, why it's called Northern Song, um, Li Qingzhou and her family and her husband lived in a city called Kaifeng, which is the capital of the Northern Song Dynasty. Um, so, and because uh, her um, Li Qingzhou's um, father and uh, her husband's father, they all served in the imperial court. Uh, also, they are from different parties. Um, so uh, after marriage, they actually, they marriage, of course, the, the parents all agreed and there was a perfect marriage. But after things, there's some um, dispute between the two parties. So like uh, Li Qingzhao's husband, uh, 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 father-in-law, uh, his party won. So Li Qingzhao's father was like um, um, uh, exiled by um, by the emperor. So that was a moment that Li Qingzhao has to be with his her family and separate from her husband because she was with her family to other places, and uh, um, her husband was stay in the capital. Um, so there was a moment still in marriage, she wrote a lot of poem, uh, like missing her husband. But then the like the, the her father was forgiven by the emperor. So so she her family still uh, uh still lead a um, wealthy life after. But when the uh Jing and the Song War, so that was the you know um uh, Song Dynasty, Tang Dynasty, Song Dynasty. The 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 uh, emperor is Han uh, ethnic, but uh, the Qing uh, is another group of ethnic. They are uh, they from the Mongolia, so they began the war with Song Dynasty. They um, 
from the, they are from northern, and then they um, the Song Dynasty, the Song, the government of northern Song um, collapsed. So uh, the the emperor and the, the emperor's family were uh, exiled to the south. Um, at that time, uh, so I actually like the picture of Song Huizhong. Song Huizhong was the not the last uh, emperor, uh, because she gave the um, the 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 throne to her son. But uh, but just after one year, the, their uh, their regime collapsed. So she was he was not the last one, but but the one maybe. Uh, caused the collapse of the Song and uh, Northern Song Dynasty. Uh, so um, they uh, at that time, uh, Li Qingzhao's family, uh, her husband's family, also worked at the court. So when the um, the the government collapsed, they the family finally uh, exiled uh, 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 from north to south. Uh, so they are. Um, their uh, their home was at Kaifeng, the capital. So they moved to 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 the south and then uh, settled down for the uh, south, uh, the capital of the south southern Song. So after that was um, it was still in Song Dynasty, but the, in the Song Dynasty um, there was another another emperor who is the another son of Song Huizhong. Um, she, uh, they uh, built up a new uh, government in the south, but they lost, they lost uh, most part of their north, north uh, land. So to the, to the Jin, to the Mongolia pe people. So um, they, um, then, in in that south part, Li Qingzhao and the, her family they they become poor more and more poor because the all the whole country they lost uh, a lot of power to to the north northern part to as a um, ethnic. So um, that time she was become very poor, uh, more and more poor. Not suddenly because even. Um, because they were rich family, they had a lot of uh, processing, like the collections she had. She, if she sell it, she can still uh, uh, get money and live a good life. But but more and more until her late age, then um, everything lost. So she became poor and uh, miserable. So uh, I think um, Catherine and Ling uh, post a lot of. Uh, reference in the chart, and uh, uh, you can you can uh, they will also list that in our website, so you can read those background information from the those references. Yeah, just to reiterate, yeah. uh, putting a bunch of things in the chat. Those are all going to be on the first Saturday website, and um, and they'll be there. Um, you know. <laughs> Forever, I guess. Yeah. So if you want to do some additional reading, um, those are lovely resources. Thank you. Yeah, there's a very interesting story, but also miserable. But there's a, a a lot of changes, a lot of chaos in this uh, period of uh, history. So there must be a lot of things to read. Another. Uh, Connected question, um, and you did touch on this already with, the, with your first answer, but um, just to expand on it, with so much that was going on, the chaos and destruction during the fall of the Song Dynasty, how did her work survive? How did her work survive? Um, actually, her work lost a lot. They said there was like seven volumes of her poetry and the eight volumes of her writings, essays. Um, but they got lost there. Now it says only like 50s, around 50 uh, works for her still exist. Or some uh, was thought uh, to be her, but cannot prove. Um, so it, it, it really lost a lot. The, she, so she had like, at that time, they, they, they write the, their books, right? So it, it lost on the way. Yeah. Sad to hear. 
yeah. because the, from the samples that you've shared with us, um, her work is lovely. Sorry, I cannot hear you clearly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I was just going to say that it's very sad to hear that so much of her work has been lost um, yes. from the samples that you shared with us. They, um, I mean, they're just lovely. Um, yeah. So but still, because she wrote so much, so uh, we can still see um, a lot, right? If even 50 say that can be a book, so we can still appreciate a lot of her work. Very true, very true. Our next question uh, uh, dives deeper into her poetry. Um, at times, her references to tea and to wine are indirect. Can you give us some clues to recognize that she's speaking about either of them in her poetry? Uh, you mean in one poetry? Oh, it doesn't say on this question. <laughs> <laughs> so I shared my slides again. Um, let me... So like this one, I mentioned uh, the Zhe Hu Tian, the Partridge Scale. So she said, Jiu Lan Gen Xi Tuan Cha Ku. So the Jiu and the Cha are mentioned here. The wine, sudden, I prefer the bitterness of tea. Then, then it also mentioned the, the incense. Uh, Meng Duan Pian Yi Rui Nao Xiang, my dreams interrupted by the sense of the aloe's wood. So aloe's wood is also very popular at Song Dynasty. So for Song, Song Dynasty, in the, like the, there's four elegance of Song Dynasty's people, like um, Fen Xiang Dian Cha, Hua Hua Cha Hua, uh, which means you light the incense, um, the whisking tea, uh, hanging pictures and uh, and uh, arranging flowers. So uh, normally in a like tea set, uh, you will have um, the the picture on the background and uh, uh, there's a tea uh, uh, there's a flower you arrange it flower so you get the the, the flower maybe from your garden uh, put on the tea uh, tea table and uh, you prepare your tea sets. Um, and um, sometimes you also have music. You play Gu Qing, uh, a kind of ancient um, music instrument at that time. So that's all combined as the, like the elegance, uh, elegant life of the Song people. At that time, you know, after the Tang Dynasty, uh, China became actually very wealthy. A lot of wealthy family and a lot of things developed when a, a country was peaceful and wealthy. So you have time and uh, resources to develop those uh, refined, um, sophisticated uh, the enjoyment in your life. Um, so, so that was you know, uh, before the war. That was a long, um, peaceful time for the. Uh, China, so that was a sheng shi, we call it a very prosperous uh, time in, in China. So that's, um, that's the time that people still want to, still want to remember and want to admire. And uh, even now in China, uh, a lot of um, those, those kind of elegance, the, the life or um, one, uh, renal, a uh, re, we can say renaissance. We we say it's a renaissance. Uh, people even think this Song Dynasty as a renaissance uh, time uh, in China, like if uh, compared to the Western culture. Yeah, uh, links mentioned the four elegance in the chart. So uh, and this, like this uh, in this poem we it. it literally says the wine and the tea. But in some uh, tea, uh, let me see. And here is tea. Um, this also mentioned the tea, but some in some points it didn't, maybe it didn't write the wine, but they she will mention like get drunk. 
she mentioned a lot of things like get drunk about some something, something. So um, that is tea, um, wine related. Or like in this uh, poem, uh, it says, 寂寞尊前席上. Um, the zun uh, is the like the wine cup. So she also often mentioned the wine cup. Or like this. Um, Uh, so like this uh, in this sentence it said um in Chinese it didn't say any word about uh, in uh, lit literally says wine but he said Jing Zun is the golden cup and the Lu Yi is the I mentioned that this is the green foam on the wine so there's no word mentioning wine but you can know it, she is describing why using different words and uh, there's the, like the so she mentioned the the cup with the amber uh color he she, uh, in the chinese he didn't say um amber wine right she just say the deep amber um, but this is the colored she described wine so also, uh, and the, the next sentence, uh, 未成沉醉亦先容. So uh, before I drunk, my heart melts with yearning for him. So she mentioned the drunk, the 醉, is also related to wine. So a lot of words, they, they just didn't say wine, but you can see from the lines that's all related to wine. So I... Is it, uh, I, am I asked your question? Yes, thank you so much. Um, we have another question um, and that it just, it's perfect because you mentioned how the tea, um, wine, you know, when you have the setup. Yeah. Music, how, um, can you go into more detail about how these elements um, were connected and why they're connected? So, uh, Sorry, uh, you mentioned the the music, right? Yeah, with the music and paintings and even having flowers, mm -hmm. it sounds like that the tea and wine are very connected to those different elements of nature, music, um, and other arts. Can you speak more about that connection, um, why it's there and what it means or symbolizes? Um, so um, I think a lot of things uh, combine with the like the uh, appreciation of nature. So, um, like, I think this kind of things also. If you have attended a Japanese tea ceremony, you will see um, uh, they actually they of course uh, they develop a lot things Tang Dynasty, but there's a lot of things connect to the things at that time. Um, so hanging. Um, pictures. Uh, the picture usually has a theme, or um, and they have the uh, poem written beside the uh, the picture, uh, mentioning some scene that related to uh, that season or that moment or the people's um, the the mood at that time. And then uh, the flowers normally you pick up from the garden um, in this season. So it's very seasonal uh, at this moment. And uh, so the tea, we uh, like the green tea, uh, we we have uh, like, uh, now I shared my screen again, um, because I want to want you to see this. Uh, So like like this, um, uh, they mentioned the like a jack of spring. So um, that is the tea, um, and and they mentioned the season. Um, that is the spring. So Chen Dao Changmen Chen Cao Qing is the when the spring returns returns. Um, so when the uh, spring grass is lush and green, 
so at this moment, uh, it, it, uh, in the poem, it uh, in mentioning the, the the season and the uh, the uh, the green tea is especially the very seasonal things in in spring. Um, so when you drink a jack of uh, uh, um, a cup of green tea, it's like a jack of spring. Um, so that is all the sensory and the feeling, mood, all connected. So that's the beauty of of the um, tea that that they can bring you for your uh, sensory feeling. Um, so uh, tea at that moment um, with this uh, other three uh, elements for the elegance, they all connected to your sensor, your feeling, your appreciation of beauty. Uh, and uh, of life, um, of nature. Um, so that's, I, I feel that's more about that. But why um, it's more than an uh, enjoyment um, of um, uh, the like <laughs> more physical enjoyment um, than the spirit enjoyment as the tea. So I feel that that's a little bit different, but um, but you know, this is the their life. So the the Song people's life. Tea is more for scholars, um, artists. Um, wine is is also inspiring for artists. Like all the wines in the in, in the West country, they are inspirations. But um, there could be more like during the feasting, um, the banquet. So uh, enjoy with friends. Uh, that's more for socialization, but the tea is um, tea. They like the tea party. I can say uh, they also have some socialization things, but it's more uh, like elegant for scholar um, type um, thing, and the people will um, will will write poem at a time. Um, so that that that's all. Um, they can have some um, like like the um, overlaps, uh, but they also have some difference. So I don't know. Do you agree? Absolutely. Thank you so much for that explanation. Uh, there's a question in the chat as um, and. Uh, also, um, some other questions mm -hmm. about uh, Li Xingzhao's poetry uh, in her style specifically. Um, did she develop her own style? Was she using, and I apologize for not pronouncing these, but it's the Wang Yu Pai style or the Yan Qi style? Sorry. Yi An Ci, yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, but it's difficult to pronounce. Uh, so at the beginning, I mentioned this. Uh, Wan Yu style. So Wan Yu means uh, the elegant and the restrained style. So um, so there's two parts. Um, main um style. Um, one is the Wan Yu style. One is the Hao Fang style. So Wan Yu style is the elegant and the restrained style, and the Hao Fang style is the unconstrained style. Translate. So um. But Li Qingzhao is famous for the Wan Yue style. Uh, so she is not the only one who write, uh, write, write Wan Yue style. So he is, she is one of the Wan Yue style. But he just perfected the Wan Yue style into his her own style. So there's only called the Yi An Ci. Uh, that, that is the Yi An style. Yi An is her another name. That we call it the, the Hao. So it's it, it, uh, it's her like the name she gave to herself uh not the given family name um not the given name by family so um so they use her name even to mention this style um because her like mastery of the musicality and the mastery of the like reputation and the imagery um so the uh and and there's also but she is not only uh writing one year style 
in her late age, she also writes some very unconstrained style, like male, uh, very um, um, hero, uh, like talking about the hero in the past uh, dynasty. So she she kind of so that's why we say she was very talented. She is not only very female style, uh, like the elegant style, and she is also be able to produce those um, um, very male, the masculine style of, um, um, poem in, in, when, uh, when in her age. Um, and also this, this other poet uh, can also, will also like um, uh, mimic her style to write poem, even like I mentioned the Xin Qi Ji, she, he, he, a male, he used her style um, and uh, write those beautiful sentences like the Mu Ran Hui Shou that was so popular uh, later um, in between, uh, in, 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 in the readers, among the readers for, for those very elegant, very, we said constrained style wine. But I just feel constrained and uh, elegant is not um uh, not enough to describe to translate this meaning uh, so that's more those feeling in this kind of poem yeah you said yeah her poet poetic style is known as yi an si style yes yi an, yeah thank you so much for going a little more detail on that um, and excuse my ignorance on this follow-up question, but in these different styles of writing uh, or poetry, um, do they have particular um, number of lines or what in English we would say syllables or, you know, like what's the cadence of those, of those yeah. poems, the structure? Yeah, um, I maybe cannot um, say, uh, translate it, uh, into English, I don't know how to translate. Like uh, in Chinese, we have ping ping zhe zhe, ping ping zhe. That's the normal, normal uh, reason rhyme of the poem. Like you, you can feel uh, you, even you don't know the words. It's like ping ping zhe zhe, ping ping zhe. So it's there's some reason in it. So um, I mentioned two ru meng ling, the as if in a dream. So. You can see in the title that's called To the Tomb. So actually, this title is not a title for the poem, for the poetry, because um, the title normally will relate it to the content, right? But this uh, is just a rhyme, the name of the rhyme, name name of the music, this, um, this poetry, this music, um, this, or, or we say this melody. <laughs> Um, this is um, a name of this melody. So in the Roman link, they always have the similar reason, right? Um, you just uh, filling the lyrics according to the reason. So in this two Roman link, if I read it, you can feel Changji Xi Ting Ri Mu, Chen Zui Bu Zhi Gui Lu. So there's six, six words and then Five words to six words. Jing Xing Wan Hui Zhou, Wu Ru O Hua Shen Chu. And then two to two, six. Zhen Du, Zhen Du, Jing Qi Yi Tan O Lu. And another Rumu Ling, uh, that's the same, all the same uh, length of sentence. Uh, six, six, uh, five, six, and two to six. Zuo Ye Yu Shu Feng Zhou. It's like and the Jendu Olu. So they are the same, the same uh, lyrical melody, right? Thank you so much. We are at the end of our questions in our Q&A box. So I have one more uh, comment, actually, I would love to read. Um, 
Dennis writes, thank you for your beautiful selection of the history, poetry, and illustrations of the production and drinking of tea and wine in China. Your readings in Chinese were also very delightful and representative of the sentiments in the accompanying poetry. Uh, so again, I uh, just want to echo what Dennis wrote um, as thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, I just wanted to see if uh, give you the mic, <laughs> the virtual mic one more time, if you have any closing remarks you'd like to add. Oh, um, uh, I, I just thank you for you giving me this opportunity uh, to speak with you, um, to share with you that those beautiful um, poems that I learned uh, when I was a child. So I still remember like the first three poems I can remember by my heart. Um, so they are all beautiful, but because of this uh, lecture, I went back to study it once more and uh, even for the English version, because there are so many different English version about uh, for these um, poems. Um, and I read those English version. I had a new, actually new look, new understanding of these uh, poems, because uh, if you translate differently, you have different understanding of the the uh, words in, in Chinese, because this is a, a ancient Chinese uh, sentence. It's not a, nowadays the language. So when you translate it, um, the English translation, uh, translation version um, give me um, like new understanding of, of this poem. So it, I, I found it's very interesting. And uh, I hope I have more chance to, uh, to discuss with um, the people who love those uh, poems and uh, who love Chinese culture uh, and uh, uh, appreciate the beauty of those culture or tea or, or anything that's related to, to, to our life. Um, so um, I, I will be very appreciated uh, to have more chance to to discuss with you uh, or share a tea, a cup of tea with you. <laughs>